Well, greetings, sisters. It's been a great day. And for that, I am glad. Uh, God has really blessed us with beautiful weather here. I don't know where, how it is where you are, but we've had a wonderful day today. And we're still celebrating Women's History Month featuring remarkable women who have defied the odds and blazed the trail for women today. And tonight, our guest is the remarkable evangelist Karen Lewis, who will share her remarkable journey to ministry and her career accomplishments. And she will share after we show the video tonight. We thank the Lord for her parents being on the line with us and her sister and her family and uh, a lot of her friends and people uh, that are associated with her is joining us tonight. And we just thank the Lord for them coming in uh, in support of her tonight. At this time, we'll go forth in prayer. God, you're a great God. You're a wonderful God. You're a mighty God. You are a remarkable God. We know that there's none like you. And we thank you, Lord, because we live and move and have our being in you. Thank you for the beautiful sisters and those that are on the line tonight. Thank you, Lord, for ministering to each and every one of them at the point of their needs. We thank you for keeping our heads lifted, Father, towards you. Because, Lord, the word says, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. We thank you for being the Prince of Peace. We thank you, Lord, for being Jehovah, everything that we need. Now, we ask that you bless us as we have this segment tonight. Thank you, Lord, for Evangelist Lewis. Thank you for her family. Thank you for all the accomplishments that you have allowed her to do. And we thank you for the ministry, God, that she gives to the body of Christ. Continue to bless and strengthen her in every area of her life. Anyone sick here on the line tonight, we ask that you touch them now. Heal them with the blood that you shed for every infirmity. And we decree that with your stripes they're healed. Lift up the bow down head. Encourage someone today. Supply every need that is needed right here today. And we ask that you just bless us tonight as we go forth into the furtherance of this segment. And we give you praise and glory for it now in Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we'll read our scripture. Our scripture is from Psalms 103, 21 and 22. It's the King James Version. Psalm 103, 21 and 22. Bless ye the Lord, all you his host, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And we know those that hear and do his work, his work are blessed as well. At this time, we will have a video by C.C. Winans. So we just ask that you sit attentively as she shares. Our goodness of God. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God So my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God hey. Cause all my Your 
my lord. Amen, amen, amen. Gonna sing amen. of the goodness of God. We know he's been faithful and he's been so, so good. Can I get a witness? Just let me see a show of hands that he has been so faithful and he has been so good. And that's how remarkable our God is. We're getting ready to introduce our wonderful guest tonight. Amen. She's a precious sister. Just every time uh, I, I'm around her, you could just feel joy. You feel that peace. I know she was talking about that peace today, but she has just such a graceful spirit, just a wonderful spirit. And I just, uh, just love her. And I thank the Lord for all that he's doing in and through her life. And we're going to introduce her right now. Evangelist Karen Lewis has been very happily married to her soulmate, James A. Lewis Jr., for 35 years. And they have three sons, James III, David, and Matthew, and one granddaughter, Malia, Daniel. She is baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, as she attends Greater Christ Temple Church, pastored by Bishop Sherman Merritt Sr., Dr. Uh, D.D., I'm sorry. And uh, she is committed to quality and excellence in service. She studied higher education, leadership, and policy at Vanderbilt University Peabody College. She's a former dean, student affairs, and enrollment manager management at Carolina's College of Health Sciences. Currently, she is the founding associate dean for student affairs and diversity at Belmont University, Frisk College of Medicine in Nashville, Tennessee. She has a lot of great accomplishments and we're just sitting attentively. We just say hi to her family again. <laughs> Amen. It's her mom and dad, her sister. We just thank the Lord for them being with us as well. And we're going to give way for Evangelist Karen Lewis as she shares. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I know that you all on mute, but wave your hands and just praise the Lord. If um, I couldn't think of a better song to start the service tonight, because if my testimony were a song, that would be the song, the goodness of God. And I just thank and praise the Lord for the opportunity to share tonight. I want to thank Evangelist Morrison just for the invitation. It is truly an honor. And I do thank God for my parents. I did not expect my parents, but my parents and one of my sisters is on the call. And I have to um, update some information. It's my fault that I did not send Evangelist Morrison an updated um, bio, but I've been married for 40 years. Amen. It'll be 41 this year. And we have three grandchildren, Malia, Montero, and Amir. And uh, I just thank and praise the Lord for my family. And so I just want to get started. So I'm, I, um, the instructions I've been given, I'm just going to share my story because God is woven all through my life. And then um, the last five minutes or so, um, probably I'll do 20, 25 minutes of just sharing the multiple testimonies that have defined God's presence in my life. And the last five minutes, I really want to share some great lessons, some golden nuggets that God has sealed in me that I live by, that are core to my existence, that I cannot live without, that I also believe is what um, it centers me and keeps me in a place where God can use me. And that's, that's what's most important to me. So I, like I said, my parents are on the call and I didn't expect that, but I think it's great because it does start there. And we were raised in a, in a, in a Catholic home and a religious home. So I thank God for that because we were raised with a God consciousness. We were raised going to church. My parents sacrificed so we could go to Catholic schools and we got one of the best educations you could ever get. And we were raised in the black community in Atlanta, um, where we saw, you know, everywhere we saw, we saw up and coming progressive African Americans. My parents were both teachers, they were part of the Morehouse College and Spelman College. And so we grew up in this nurturing, loving family where education was, um, was, um, was emphasized but also it was emphasized about service. My parents really put into us that you did not achieve just for your own sake, that you achieved and you always look to serve the community. So with that foundation, um, when, when it came time, when I got into my early 20s and when I, well, really my 18, I graduated from high school. I went to the University of Notre Dame for my freshman year of college and I was immature, I was unready. 
And I had such a good time that they invited me not to return the next year. And I just thank and praise the Lord that through that experience, and see, I'm going to be very transparent because we have to talk about our lives are not all victories. Our lives, we, we have challenges, we have failures, we have bad decisions, we have consequences. But the beauty about God is that despite all of that, he makes everything all right. And so I'm, so I'm, I'm going to share you know, the whole story, not just the highlights and the great things because that's a part of the testimony of God. And if I don't share those parts, then I'm doing God a disservice. Yeah, so when I came back home at, you know, at first year, you know, I mean, you're quote unquote smart and all of that is it's a failure. You, you're wrestling with a lot of emotions about that. So I transferred immediately to other schools, but I could not figure out what I wanted to do. And so I started working at Crawford Long Hospital as a nursing assistant on the third shift and met my husband, my, well, my future husband at the time. and I decided to leave school, got married, but wouldn't you know that even in the wedding, God was working. So I talked about that foundation we had, that Christian God consciousness we had growing up. And so I was getting ready to get married and the Lord used our wedding to introduce us to salvation. And I just thank and praise the Lord for it because it was my sister Carmen who's on the call. I had identified through a friend of mine, a bridesmaid, I loved how her hair looked. And I said, well, who does your hair? And through that, she introduced us to who turned out to be our first first lady. Um, and that was Dr. J.A. Guthrie, the late Dr. J.A. Guthrie and, and Bishop J.D. Guthrie in Georgia with First Apostolic Church. So my sister went to get her hair done. And then I went to get my hair done. And I asked the question you know, that you ask any holiness preacher. I said, what does, what does going on in the world today have to do with the end of time? Well, Bishop Guthrie brought out a flip chart and gave me a Bible study right there while I was getting my hair done. And my sister had already was searching and was much more, she was much more committed to her religious walk than I was at that point. I was searching, but I was searching in my way. She was searching and searching in her way. And so she went to the church and she got baptized and her life changed. And, and then I was like, whoa, you know, and even my parents were like, what, what's going on? What's going on? You know? And so then I went to the church and, and God saved me. And then my husband came to say, what's going on? We had only been married less than a month. So within four to six weeks of our wedding, God saved me and my husband. So this year will be 41 years married and 41 years in ministry. And so I thank and praise the Lord for that. But what he did in that first setting is he taught us the apostolic foundations of prayer, fasting, reading your Bible, being faithful in attendance, tithing, certain solid principles of worship and praise and, and living separate um, were instilled in us. But also another piece that was so important was the part about working on yourself. How many know when we come, you, 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 there's a lot of stuff to work through. There's a lot of stuff you have to work out. And I thank and praise the Lord that that journey started for me. And while I was involved with church work, one of the first lessons I learned in that walk, and so I'm going to fast forward because I want to be mindful of the time, is that there is a difference between salvation and church work. Okay, that, that's one of the first things I had to really learn because I had the two confused. Now, God will reward you for your service, but I was more involved with church work than I was with working on myself and really allowing the Holy Ghost to work on me and to perfect me and to, and to really help me be the best that I could be. So I'm gonna fast forward. We were in that ministry for 27 years and then God led us to move to Nashville for the first time through a job relocation. And I'll, I'll part that for one moment because while we were in Atlanta, the Lord really dealt with me at the age of 37 to go back to school, to go back and finish my undergraduate degree. And saints, it was the time. And so that one of my messages to everybody on this call, you don't have to follow the regular standard man-defined timeline. You have to follow the timeline that God has for your life. So in those 17, 20, those 17 years that I left school and before I went back to school, I was married. I had three wonderful sons and I was in, get involved in the ministry and I was growing and learning things that I needed to learn spiritually so that it was time I was ready. I was much more mature um, emotionally, psychologically, 
in every way, spiritually. I went back to school and my advisor teased me because my name was Karen. I don't want any surprises at the end, Lewis. That's how he called me because I every semester I said, okay, how many hours I need to finish? I don't want to hear anything at the end about I need three more hours. And so I stayed on top of that. And through that experience, I was working full time. I was going to full school full time. And I was also working in the ministry full time. And I just thank and praise the Lord for the strength he gave me to do all those things. Um, when I graduated, it was a great time. When I was, while I was working on my undergrad degree, I took a class at Georgia State through cross registration and educational psychology. From there, I got the vision for my master's degree. And my master's degree is from Georgia State University in educational psychology. And what I got from that is that as you step out by faith and as you do what God tells you to do, he will raise your vision. He will expand your aspirations. He will expand what you look and expect for him to do for you. You grow through that. God never intended for us to be stagnant and to be stuck. And so from there, I got exposed to educational psychology. I was working at Morehouse School of Medicine as the director of admissions. I went from there. I, well, I have another part of that testimony. Wow, and there's so much in it is that when I had my youngest son, Matthew, he almost died at birth. They had to do an emergency C-section. Um, the placenta had ruptured um, right before he was born. And so shortly after, <clears throat> excuse me, he was born, I went back to work, but he was having projectile vomiting and everything. So I came home for four years. I didn't understand why, because I finally found this passion. I found my calling in life was to work in higher ed, specifically in graduate health professions. But God had another plan. He pulled me back for a moment. I devoted my time to the family. When Matt went to school, then it was pressed upon me, it's time for you to go back to work. To show you God, I called my former boss at Morehouse School of Medicine and said, I want to come back part-time. She says, full-time or nothing. I said, okay, I'll come back full-time. When I stepped back into Morehouse School of Medicine, I stepped back in as if I never left. My salary trajectory stayed the same. I actually ended up being promoted into another position. And this was before I had finished my undergraduate degree. Then when I finished my undergraduate degree, I became director of admissions, then the registrar and director of student information systems. I was involved nationally with um, <clears throat> excuse me, medical education and diversity. God was just pouring all these experiences into me. He was also illuminating talents and gifts that I did not know I had. Some I did, but they had become dormant. And he started reigniting all of that in my life. So when he called us to go to Nashville, it was to Meharry Medical College as assistant vice president of student services and enrollment management. And once again, salary, promotion, everything that came with that. He brought us to Nashville. And because of the apostolic foundation that was laid, at us, laid with us in Atlanta, we didn't lay out a church. We immediately found church. And that was a greater Christ temple with Bishop Merritt and First Lady Merritt. We immediately, church, faithful, working, whatever God would have us to do, we did. And I'll come back to some of those principles. We did everything that God showed us to do. <clears throat> and he blessed us. He blessed us as far as houses, whatever that we had need of, he blessed us in the midst of it. Then we had an experience where we went to Des Moines, Iowa. And I'll say there, I did not pray as hard as I should have about going to Des Moines, Iowa. I'm going to be very honest about that. We knew we were supposed to go to Nashville beyond a shadow of a doubt. Na the, the Nashville to Des Moines move, God allowed that move. It was something I wanted to do and we went and we did it, but we had a dry space in Des Moines. We had it started off great and then we had a dry space. But let me tell you something. You learn to thank God for everything. You thank him for the blessings. You thank him for the victories. You thank him for the deliverances, but you also thank him for the tests, the trials and the tribulations because growth only comes in places of discomfort. It does not happen in places of convenience. It comes through the painful parts. It comes through the dry spells. And so in Des Moines, that turned out to be a hard space, a hard place. And we had a desire to come back south. We have family in the south. We're from the south. My youngest sister was diagnosed with breast cancer. And we really wanted to be back home. And so I started this job search. 
And by then I had finished my master's degree. I had finished my doctorate at, at Vanderbilt. And so to show you how God moved while I had, while I floundered at Notre Dame, God brought me back around and I finished my doctorate at Vanderbilt with honors. And so, you know, it's all about timing. It's all about readiness. It's all about him working on you to have you ready. And it's not on your clock. It's not on man's clock. It's on God's clock. And so I thank and praise the Lord for that. But when it was time for the job search, saints, I, I just knew with my doctorate and my years of experience, this was going to be a slam dunk, right? Oh, no, no, no. God humbled me real quick. It was 38 applications and I'm almost 20 months before the position God had for me opened up in Charlotte, North Carolina. And God took us to Charlotte, their prayer deliverance tabernacle with bishop and Darius. we were there for about almost four, almost five years four and a half years but let me tell you i never will forget this my husband and i were talking about where would we want to retire because i'm getting close to that age not that close but i'm getting there and we said we would retire to to nashville why our grandchildren were here um you know and we just we love nashville we had just said that thinking that's 10 years down the road but we just said, we'll do Nashville. One of my mentees called me in December of 2020 and said, Karen, have you heard that Belmont is opening up a medical school? I said, no, I hadn't heard that. And do you know, once she gave me that information, God really laid on my heart and they had just named the dean who had come from Meharry. And I reached out <coughs> and they gave me his new email address. He hadn't even started at Belmont yet. And the Lord laid it on my heart to write just a letter of interest, a standard letter of interest. Congratulations on being the new dean. Here attaches my resume. When you're building your leadership team, please consider me. I sent that in December of 2020. Didn't think anything more of it. I was happy where I was at. Um, doing some great work at Carolinas. I had three major technology projects going. I was the dean of student affairs and enrollment management. And in January, January the 25th or 26th, as a matter of fact, I got a call. Well, first I got an email on January the 7th saying, thank you for your letter, you know, and everything. Very gracious letter. I still didn't think anything of it. January 26th, my phone started blowing up. I was working from home and God had it. Well, so I, couldn't, I didn't recognize the number. So finally he left a message and I called him back. We set up an appointment and we talked and he, you know, and I just talked about my experiences and everything. Two days later, he says, I need two references. I said, I need to talk to you because this is fast forwarded. You know, people don't ask for references to the end. He had never seen me. We had just had one phone conversation. He said, well, we're ready to move forward. I've checked you out. And you know, a lot of people are saying move on her now. And so that weekend, I had two phone interviews with other people. Um, within a week or so, they were making the offer and you know, had me sign the letter of intent. And I had these major projects going. I said, well, I really can't walk away right now because they wanted me to come like right then. I said, I need May or June at least. And they agreed to wait, but I was engaged with them for those months. I would come to Nashville, I would be on Zoom calls and they were paying me as a consultant on the time that I spent getting ready. Saints, the testimony, and especially in this latest move, is that when I went to Carolinas, I took a significant cut in pay, but it gave me what I needed to get back to the South, okay? And money is not everything. And sometimes God has you to take down and take low so he can shoot you forward. When I say with this, with this transition, not only did he restore my salary trajectory, he actually doubled what I had given up going to Carolinas, okay? Then... When we lived in Nashville before, I had a subdivision I liked. I liked this particular builder. And so when I went to look at where you know, we were looking to relocate, we thought we would rent for a year first and build a house. You know, we were just thinking all the different options. And as you know, the real estate market was like the Hunger Games. Just a rental was like, and I didn't want to rent and have to move twice and put half our stuff in storage. So I was speaking to our real estate agent and I spoke to the guy at the mortgage company. He said, well, you know, I've already pre-qualified you, right? And I had not realized we had been pre-qualified. So then we started looking at purchasing. And 
It was in last summer, last April, and it was the Hunger Games. We put offers on three houses and two houses. The first two, we didn't bid enough. You had to offer more. So I had a subdivision in mind that we wanted to build in, and they said it'd be a year before they could build. I had one of two four floor plans selected. How about, as we were looking, my real estate agent called and said, Karen, have you noticed this? One of the floor plans I wanted in the subdivision I wanted to be in was put on the market. And we had one weekend to get an offer in. We got an offer in. The Lord laid it on us to offer $25,000 more than what they were asking. Okay. They called us that Sunday and said, they like your offer. I did also a letter of interest. You know, you have to do personal statement. You have to do all kinds of things now. And they said, but they're concerned because the open house yesterday, 38 people came. They have 38 offers. Your offer is the only one you all did not come. I said, well, do we need to drive to Nashville now? Or can I send my son representing our DNA to go and look at the house and speak on our behalf? And they said, no. They said, your real estate agent told us that she knows every floor plan in this subdivision. She's lived in one of these homes before. She knows exactly what she wants. And they took our offer. But God didn't stop there. When the appraisal came back, we were the only one, the real estate agent had four people that had put offers that exceeded the, what they were asking for. Ours was the only one where the appraised value was actually higher than what we offered. And I mean, God just worked it all the way around the floor plan in the subdivision, everything that we wanted, truly fulfilling the scripture of gave me the desires of my heart. And I thank God for that because it wasn't about, it's not about the house as much as it watching God move. And to talk, to talk about that fully, I have to back up about obedience because back in 2020, God started giving me certain instructions financially. He told us, put this away, save this, do this, do that. He gave us certain, certain instructions. We did not know why. but we did it. We were obedient one, still not seeing this move at all. He gave additional instructions, which we did. When I tell you, when it came time to close, when it came time to go through the process, every dime was in place. Every single dime was in place. We just had to move money for it to happen. And then enough left over to do some renovations, do some painting, to put in a wall, to do things we wanted to do. The house was only two and a half years old, but there were some things we wanted to do to make it our own. We were able to do all of that without any additional loans. We were able to take care of everything and then Belmont moved us here. I say all that to say that God has you in mind and, and don't ever, don't, don't compare yourself to other people. Don't put yourself on these man-made timelines and these expectations of what, um, what other people think you should be doing. I tell medical students and people applying to medical school all the time, the street committee, and the street committee has a chapter in the church too. The street committee meets every week. And they, and they go down the checklist of what they think you should be doing. Ignore the street committee. You need to be tuned in to God. He will direct you on what to do. And it might look crazy to other people, but it's not for other people. Um, my husband and I, like I said, we've been married 41 years. And our marriage, we do what works for us. Okay. And my husband was here. He was just telling the minute. It's been a while. He's retired now, but that was a while, a while where I made more than he did. But guess what? It didn't change his position or my position according to the word of God. And when you keep that straight, then God will bless. You have to understand that you have to be connected with God. So all of this, to bring it around full circle, one thing that God really started working with me on years, I mean, decades ago, even when we were still in Atlanta, was about having that personal relationship with him. I mean, really getting to know God, getting to know how God speaks to you. I remember when I first got saved and people would say, God told me, and I'm like, how do you know God said? You know, I used to, I used to always really wrestle with that. 
But the thing is, when you stay before the Lord in prayer, fasting, reading your Bible, coming to church and learning about God, you will learn how God speaks to you. And for me, whenever I wake up first thing in the morning, if there's something in my most immediate dream or a thought or something that is in my mind when I first wake up, I have learned follow through. Do whatever that was instructed in that space of time because that's where God speaks to me. Um, that It was last year that God really started working with me about dedicated prayer time and getting me up earlier and earlier and early. And truly, it was God getting me up early, early, early because I have very full days. He also added, for me, he added meditation to my, to my practice. And so then in last year, especially in the midst of the pandemic and everything that was going on, he, he really upped the ante for me where he started waking me up at four o'clock every morning. So even now, this morning, I don't have an alarm clock. God wakes me up. This morning, he woke me up at 341. And, and I knew it. that meant start getting yourself together. I come to my office where I have my altar. That chair back there is where I sit. I have prayer. I mean, real prayer with God. Then I have a daily scripture that he'll take me through. Then I have meditation as an app I use for meditation. That is how I start every single day. That, and that's weekends too. He did give me a break last week on vacation. I still did it, but it wasn't at four. Um, but those things center me. I have to do those things in order to be centered. Um, we're faithful in church attendance, not because we feel obligated to be there, but because we truly get the word of God. It really helps us, whether it's virtual or in person during the pandemic, we were faithful in that. And I'll tell you another thing that we live by is tithing. You do not have to convince us on tithing. We tithe, it's the first thing that we do. We pay nothing else. We pay tithes first, and then we go from there. And God has richly blessed us with that. Um, as far as some of the other things that I've applied to my spiritual and my professional life, God has brought us through four cities, four institutions. He's elevated them in each, in each time. And now I'm at a medical school that we are building from the ground up. This school does not exist yet. And we're able to lay the foundation and be a part of that leadership team. But this is something that I want to share with everybody as far as in my closing that personal relationship with God, prayer, fasting, Bible reading, faithful and attendance, tithing. You also need mentors and you need more than one mentor in your life. You need one to speak to every dimension of your life. I have professional mentors for my career. I have spiritual mentors. I have personal mentors. These are people that I, I, I just, as a matter of fact, I just shifted out some of my professional mentors now that I'm at a higher level. Because I don't care how high you get, you need somebody that you, you're going to be accountable to, somebody that they will check you, somebody you can check in with and say, am I handling this situation right? Um, you, it pays to be humble and to acknowledge, I know what I know, but most importantly, I know I don't know everything. And, and I'm real clear on that. I'm also very clear that any knowledge that you get, it comes through revelation from God. Um, that everything comes from God, even intellect, gifts, and talents. You have to really acknowledge and be clear about where it comes from. It's not about you, but it's about what God has placed in you and the responsibility it creates. I'm a voracious reader. Amazon comes to our house regularly with books. I order books like some people order shoes and clothes. Um, I'm reading three books right now on, on different things, some, one on diversity, one on learning and leadership, and then another spiritual book. And then I have my Bible reading. So I'm constantly reading and pouring into my spirit um, and seeking knowledge. Um, as far as self-care, I had to really teach myself how to sleep. Um, I was one of those people that would brag about, oh, yeah, I only need four hours of sleep. Girl, I was up to one o'clock and got up at five. Don't do that. that. That's not worth bragging about. You know, that, that you're shortchanging yourself. Your health will fall in, in the midst of that at some point. You can't go like that forever. Um, exercise, sleep, taking vacations, um, doing whatever you like to do, whether it's massages, mani-pedis, dance, 
Whatever it is that you like to do that restores your spirit, water is my element. So water refreshes me. So I find ways to be around water when I can. Um, I also invest in myself. When I say that, workshops, seminars, I'm not saying it has to be a whole lot of money, but be prepared to invest in yourself. And most importantly is to be consistent. If you're consistent, anything you're consistent with, God will bless you in that. So be consistent and be disciplined um, to have a heart of gratitude, but also to be forgiving. That there, there are people who've done me wrong different points of my life and there are times I haven't done the right thing. Um, but I've learned that it's not worth having a bitter root. And I learned that from a season in my life where I let a bitter, bitter root get a hold to me. And it took a lot of work. It took so much work. I said, Lord, I never want to have to go through that process again. It's not worth it. So forgive, let it go. Um, and be clear, forgive doesn't mean you give those same people that hurt you equal access to hurt you some more. Forgive and then put the appropriate boundaries there. And, 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 and then you go from there and then to have gratitude. And then last but not least, the one thing I, I, that I wish for the body of Christ is that a lot of times we, we use God in a reactionary way. You know, tests and trials come and we plead and ask for God. You look at the children of Israel in the Bible, you know, the, the cycles, mankind cycles. One thing God has shown us, especially in the past year to two years, is that let's be, get proactive with God. Let's ask God in advance what we should do. Let's hear his voice when he tells us how to be prepared to step into his blessings and not always be in a place where we have to be rescued. There is a difference. And there is a um, and there is a life like that in God. And it's not, not always about I'm in trouble, bring me out. Sometimes God can prepare you in advance to step into where he, what he has for you. And if we can embrace that as a body of Christ, I think that we, you, hear the, you hear the cliches, living beneath your privileges, saints, we have. We have, a, but there is a different way to live. But let's, let's, let's embrace God on the front end. Let's be proactive about our relationship with God so that we can enjoy the benefits of God and, and on the front end and the fullness. God has more for all of us than he's already done. So if God has done great things for you already, God has even more. Can you imagine? There is even more. There is greater that he can do but we have to position ourselves for it. So that's the, that's the Cliff Notes version. That's the super fast version um, of testimony. And I just thank and praise God because I have total clarity that I owe everything to him. And my goal is whether I go by the way of the grave or that I'm alive and remain, that I be caught up to meet him in the air. That's, that's it. I will leave the house, the job and everything. That is my main goal. Saints, when you reorder priorities like that, and, and one last thing, the Lord dropped in my spirit a few weeks ago, because I've watched him work some things out for us. And he said, because you've been prioritizing me, I prioritize your concerns. And he does. And so he's not a genie in the bottle. He's not something or somebody we can manipulate. We have to be righteous before him and come before him in honesty and humility. But saints, there's a whole nother level to living in God. And I just encourage everyone. I still haven't arrived. I'm still expecting more from God. And to God be the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is wonderful. We just ask that you unmute yourself so we can come in and give the Lord praise for this awesome testimony. It's really encouraged me. Uh, especially in all the different uh, principles that she's given, the different nuggets that she has shared. No. Oh my God, that needs to be in a book, um, Evangelist Lewis. <laughs> oh I keep God. hearing book and I'm going to have to be obedient to that. I've been hearing that for several years now. Mm, that really does. It's really wonderful. Wonderful. We really appreciate you and thank you for knowing uh, the seasons that God has, has you in and how he shifts you each time. Uh, and just then even in, like you said, in, in, in the obedience 
uh, in, in moving in God's timing and, and where he will have you, then that's where the blessings continue to flow. I, um, I'm really uh, excited about all of this that you shared, and especially when you're talking about walking in, in obedience and how the Lord has prepared you for everything that he has caused you to accomplish, and not only in the marketplace, but even in the ministry, especially being there with the Guthrie. So I know that, <laughs> I know that was an experience because they are powerful. I just love the Guthrie's. They are very powerful in training and equipping uh, uh, you uh, for that. As far as your ordination and everything, when did you um, accept your call? And just kind of talk so, about that. So believe it or not, so I accepted my, I, I, I received my call. I haven't completed the ordination process yet. I've accepted my call early in my saved walk, but it kind of just got sat on. And so my husband went forth first and which mm -hmm. was fine. And I've just been, God's just been pouring into me all these years. Mm -hmm. And it was really when we, when we came to Nashville the first time, I started doing some work, you know, stepping out there. But then when we went to Des Moines, I did a lot more teaching there. I love to teach. I love to teach adults. And so then I did that in Des Moines. I did new members class. I had designed a whole curriculum for new members. Mm, and I was able to walk in my gifts there. Then when we went to North Carolina, the same, they really embraced us. And both my husband and I were teaching in the adult Sunday school. And they were alternate mm. weeks. So once a month, I taught in the um, adult Sunday school. And most ministries we've been in, my husband and I have also led the marriage ministries. Oh, um, you know, we like to keep that real too, because, um, you know, people have these fantasies about marriage, but, you know, God's in the center. And like I said, we've been married 41 years. Um, so we, we, that's another area that we work in. Um, now that I'm back in Nashville, I reached out to uh, Evangelist Dunlap to kind of get the, the, the other paperwork in order. And um and want to God's really been pressing on me on stepping out more um like I said in the teaching and the ministering especially with women um so I'm gonna be obedient to that and um and follow through and I want to piggyback on something you just said about seasons this is another one of the golden nuggets mm -hmm. um saints in our flesh we have a tendency to extend seasons longer than God ever intended them to be we have to be very careful about that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's usually in the form of relationships. Um, there's sometimes their relationships, and I'm not, I'm not talking about marriage per se, but I'm talking about other relationships in our life. God will have somebody in our lives for a season. And mm -hmm. sometimes we, we ignore when God is letting us know that season needs to change and we keep wanting to hold on to it. And usually it takes something um, usually more traumatic than you had to go through for you to realize that and to sever those ties. God has severed certain ties in my life that needed to be severed. That season was over. And let me tell you something, God is not going to have you looking at anybody above him, right. period. And you have to look to him and be in tune with him to know what the seasons are in your life. That's true. That's true. And then accept it. Because I know sometimes it is hard to kind of, you know, and I think when that's happening, you know, when it's happening, you're just like you said, you're trying to hold on to, but the Lord is trying to do something different. And it's not necessarily a negative way that he's severing it, but you just know there's time for the shift. So I appreciate you sharing that. I'm going to open up. Uh, did your parents want to have anything to say before we bring people in for dialogue? I know you all are so proud of her. <laughs> oh, that's true. We'll always been proud of Karen, and I'm glad to hear her tonight to see that she is still growing in her religious uh, task. Amen. So good luck, good, Karen. Proud of Thank you, Mom. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Karen, just want to say very proud of you and your accomplishments. Uh, you are a true achiever. And uh, you're still, I'm happy to hear that you don't consider yourself being there at the end, but you're still growing. Mm -hmm. And um, I would just like to ask you, how do things go today at the <laughs> office? Because I know you were concerned about that. Oh, being yeah. on vacation and being away for, what was that? 
I, I was gone for nine days. So my parents, my father is on Facebook. I just want y'all to know he's on Facebook. <laughs> and I had done a post yesterday as I said, please pray for me to get my mind right. Because for the first time in my over 30 year career, I totally detached electronically for nine days. I did not look at a single email. Um, I was tempted to do what I normally do on Sunday night, which is kind of get ready for the week and look at my emails. I didn't even look last night. I didn't look until I got into the office this morning, which is a major accomplishment for me. I want you to know, Daddy, the day went well. I was so unbothered and unmoved. Certain things came my way and I just went, well, I mean, I was totally released and um, I went to my office and did what I needed to do and came home and got ready for tonight. So uh, it went very well. And I'm planning my next vacation as we speak. Good. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's good. <laughs> and she said, you always have that to look forward to. I tell you what, just a break at any time. It's always something good to look forward to. I tell you what, that is awesome. That is awesome. I'm going to go ahead and open the floor for dialogue. Anybody have questions, comments? This time. Well, this I, just want, I, I just wanted oh, to yeah i just wanted to say karen and i um that's my bit sister we're 13 months apart but from from childhood babyhood we've always been together mom always dressed us alike until we um you know got an age where we <laughs> got into our own identity but i'm so very proud of karen um as she's my bit sister and i've always looked up to her and i still do and so I really enjoyed tonight and uh, learned some things. And I, I just, I'm so proud of what God has done and is doing and will continue to do in your life. So just uh, praise the Lord for the testimony. Well, thank you. You know, I love you. I love Karen you. and Carmen, right, Daddy? Uh, <laughs> that is cute. That is so sweet. That is so sweet. Anybody else? Questions or comments? This is your sister in love, Cheryl. Oh, hi, Cheryl. Hi, how are you? Sorry, I am not camera ready, so I can't turn my camera <laughs> on. <laughs> but I did want to say that I have truly enjoyed hearing your um, about your journey, both uh, professional and spiritual. And it's always, I think of you also as my big sister, uh, blessed to have been brought into the family and think of you and Karen, uh, Carmen and Julie as my sisters and not in-laws. But uh, beautiful testimony and uh, great nuggets, definitely, that you shared with everyone. So just thankful that I saw your message about tonight and that I was able to attend. Well, thank you, Cheryl. So this is where everybody knows Cheryl is our other sister. She's married to our brother, Patrick. And then we have one other sister, Julie. And Cheryl, like she said, she is she's our sister. And, <laughs> and God couldn't have chosen a better person for our brother and to bring into our family. Oh, that's sweet. So yeah. oh, that glad to help y'all out here. <laughs> now, now I know. Now I know why you didn't reply to my email. Now you just shut out for nine days. <laughs> well, uh, Karen, I just want you to. I just wanted to say that uh, that was a great testimony. I was uh, inspired and um, I learned a lot myself and uh, learned more about you as well. So uh, I thought I knew everything, but I actually learned some, some more things tonight. So, um, but uh, very proud of you. Uh, you've always been um, a high, high achiever, just a natural achiever, you know, uh, where some people have to work really, 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 really hard at things. Karen mm -hmm. is just a, you know, <laughs> she's gifted, smart. And um, so that's, that's something that we all wish we had, but uh, we, you know, we have to pray on. So <laughs> I just want you to know, I, I love you very much and very proud of you and uh, keep, keep climbing. Keep, keep climbing, sister girl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's my brother, Patrick, everybody. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. I love you too. I love you too. <laughs> well, hello. I'd like to pipe in. I'm the sister in love in love. I'm Cheryl's sister. 
<laughs> and I am happy to be here. I'm so glad I jumped off of another call to be able to join and catch uh -huh. um, as much of the program as I could. I saw um, your post yesterday and um, I really am glad that I was able to hear it. Um, I learned uh, quite a bit. I am more than inspired and I say I've got to get my act together and get my game plan and get my prayer plan together. I've got work to do. <laughs> but, uh, I've been very much inspired. I enjoyed this and much love to you. Much love to you too, Kelly. Thank you. <laughs> amen, amen. We just appreciate all of y'all that are on here in support of her and coming on here for the first time. And uh, we are here every Monday night uh, at seven o'clock Central Standard Time. And of course, uh, our segments are recorded. And so we do load them to our YouTube channel. If you'd like to be notified oh. every time that we have our uh, our segments, put your email uh, in the I, chat and I will add yes. you to our notification list and you'll be able to come on. Also, uh, anyone on here that has a testimony that they would like to share, please put that in the chat as well. And I'll get in touch with you through email uh, or even your phone number and we'll see about having you on our segment because we do feature women's stories of struggles and triumphs, but it's not all struggles, but a lot of accomplishments and different things that you've done and even businesses or ministries that you have, I'd like to share that. So just put that information in the chat uh, along with your email address and we will add you to our list. And uh, if you'd like to, like I said, if you'd like to come on and share, please put that in there. I have a, to say, I have a testimony uh, in the chat and then we will get in touch with you Appreciate you wanting to share. Thank you all for your information. Any more comments or questions? Praise the Lord, everybody. I wanted to ask the sister Karen, um, because you really was um, focusing on like work-life balance. And um, what is it that you do? Because I got, I missed a little bit of it. Like I, you, you were, you were going there. You was, you was on it and spitting out those nuggets but i i forgot the i didn't hear the beginning part so what is it that you actually do your so did, you hear, did you hear the part about my daily regimen the lord wakes me up at four o'clock every morning even okay. on weekends and i do prayer and and then i have a bible app and whatever scripture comes up that day i research that scripture but then i read the whole chapter and do some cross-referencing um and trust me God is in that because it always is relevant to what I need for that day. And then I do meditation. God laid it on my heart back in 2021 to add meditation to my practice. And so I have a meditation app and I will meditate anywhere from five to 30 minutes, depending on what my schedule will allow. And sometimes I meditate again at night before I go to bed. Um, Okay. Another thing that I do, um, I, I do, I love to read. So reading is good for me. Water is my element. I just now started going back to the Y three days a week to get exercise. Um, and just so you all know, um, back in 2018, I, I, weight was always a concern for me. And saints, we really have to look at weight um, because a lot of times we, we will eat and you know, God's going to cover all this and you know, God will cover a lot of things, but we do have to take care of ourselves. And so I had gotten to where I had a revelation. I love football and I was looking at a football game and they were talking about, you know, these defensive linemen and offensive linemen and, and their weight was like my weight, you know, but they were like six, eight and I'm five, three. So, you know, I was like, hmm, I weigh as much as a pro football linebacker. That's not good. You know, and so, so I actually... I prayed in that stock because I had tried so many things and I actually did do the gastric bypass surgery in 2018 and lost and have maintained over hundred pounds off since then. Um, and I thank the Lord for that. Um, back in 2014, I had bilateral knee replacement surgery and my sister's a physical therapist. So she put me through boot camp, and I really focused on that PT and the rehab work as a hard rehab. And I had both my knees done a week apart. But let me tell you something, the real reason why I needed to have knee surgery, bilateral knee replacement surgery at the age of 54 is because I carried too much weight for too long and it wore out the cartilage in my knees mm. and I was bone to bone. And saints, we don't have to live like that. 
Mm -hmm. And we, you know, there, there are things that we can do. So for those on the call that are younger, that have time to do certain things, to stop that process from happening, I encourage you to do that. Now, God blessed me through both. I mean, he really, he blessed me through both. Uh, but part of those journeys really raised my awareness about taking care of myself. That's when I started saying, you know, what, what, what real benefit does it have to sleep four hours a night when you really need seven or eight? you know, mm -hmm. and stop bragging about that and stop wearing it like a badge of honor that I'm, that you're burning both ends. I mean, it, it's amazing. Our culture does that. Women do that. Black women, you know, we're doing all this caregiving. You, you really got to get that thing together and really take care of yourself. That is okay to say no sometimes. And let me tell you, Saints, one thing that when my husband and I both started embracing certain lifestyle changes and then not allowing stress to dictate our lives, and I, my husband and I are on no medications. I have a, a pill for insomnia only as needed. I have a vitamin regimen that's out of this world that I take every single morning along with my prayer, Bible reading and meditation. But we are on no medication for blood pressure, diabetes or anything. And we're both in our 60s. And I thank and praise God for that and have some energy to run behind some very energetic grandsons. So, um, and, and on that, it's never too late. It's never too late. I didn't get that part together to the past couple of years. And, um, and, and wherever, whatever point that that hits you and you become accountable to that and you start making changes, I promise you that it will um, pay off for you no matter, where, no matter what your age is. Amen. And that, that also takes discipline. Mm -hmm. um, I would say anything, especially uh, what you do every morning, like you said, uh, um, consistently, um, that takes discipline, but also takes a made up mind to, to do that as well. Because uh, and a lot of times, because I know with me, I can have a mind to do it and I'll be all right for maybe a day or two or even a week. And I might wake up that next day and I'm like, I'm just not feeling. So I allow my emotions to dictate what I do. And I might just flow with my emotions that day. And then the next day is the same thing. So to go that way for a whole week and I'm like, oh my God, what happened? Then the month is gone. And so I've wasted a whole month that I could have been successful in and doing some things and, 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 um, and starting good habits you know, forming good habits of consistent, consistency and being disciplined and being disciplined. So can you kind of speak to that, that when you have those days that, that your emotions is saying, I'm just not there today? So, um, and that's a whole nother Bible class in itself, but <laughs> emotions. And that's something that God had really, it went back to the prayer. The more disciplined I was in prayer, the more he brought my emotions into alignment, the more I could see myself in relationship to him. Mm -hmm. And that brought the emotions when I found myself being less reactionary. And then when that consistency came through prayer and, and do other things, that, that really, it centers me. And I'll give you an example. So I, I decided with vacation that I was gonna start making sure I go to the Y or do some type of physical exercise every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, just to start. Mm -hmm. So Saturday, I, I came home, you know, I, I got up early, went, ran some errands, and I came home. And you have to look at time. You have to value time because we waste a lot of time. Yes. So when you talk yes. about discipline. So it was like two o'clock in the afternoon. I finished all my errands and I was sitting there and there were times I could look at TV or read or something like that. But I said, no, I made a commitment that I was going to go to the Y. I got up, it's 10 miles away, drove to the Y. I walked 30 minutes on a treadmill. I was back home. So within an hour, I had done 30 minutes of exercise. I had done something for myself. I kept a commitment I made to myself. And it was only 30 minutes. We waste more time procrastinating and putting yes. off and being in our feelings when we right. can just get up and go do what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And that's a revelation you really have to have, but I think it comes through the other areas of, of, of acquiring discipline. Mm -hmm. And and now, you know, now I'm holding myself accountable. I don't have to, I don't have to go through the guilt. So here's the next thing, the emotional 
the emotional guilt trip is it, it, a it's a downward spiral because yes. you know to do something, you say you're gonna do it, then you don't do it, then you feel guilty about not doing it, then you sulk and ruminate about that. And before you know it, it's another day gone by, and then you start off with a new commitment and then you don't do that. And it's this vicious, vicious circle and it's a it spiral is. downward. And before mm -hmm. you look up, I mean, not only has a week gone by, but a year has gone by and you haven't done anything. So think about it. you got 24 hours, allow time to sleep. You know, you got to work. But now sometimes you get up and work, go walk. I mean, walk 30 minutes, walk 10 minutes, do something, something. and don't put crazy expectations on yourself. If you can just say, hey, I walked five minutes today. I did mm -hmm. something for me. Your endurance will build up very, very quickly. That five minutes becomes 10 minutes. And then the more you do it, then you get to the point where your body actually craves that, hey, I need to get up, I need to move. And um, like I said, that's a, that's a story all unto itself. That's wonderful. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Just got to put it into practice. <laughs> <laughs> bring myself, like I said, I bring myself under <laughs> subjection. Flash, you got to come under subjection. <laughs> And be like, look ahead. You have to just kind of jack yourself up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Bring yourself under subjection. Amen. We'll take one more comment, a question, and then we'll uh, give way to Evangelist Lewis for closing us out in prayer. You've got a lot of good comments uh, in the chat as well. A lot of good comments. Yes. Some people are saying just a little bit at a time yep. where you can start out. All right. I just want to comment, Dr. Lewis. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed your presentation. This is Pat Crook. I wanted to ask a question regarding journaling. Have you found that helpful in, in uh, helping to do some things and knock some things off your uh, to-do list and just being able to assess and reassess where you are at different times? So then, so everybody keeps talking about me writing this book and I'm going to have to do it because I keep hearing it. I do not journal. It's something I recommend for people. I love to write and I've got some journals, but they haven't been consistent. So maybe that's the next thing I need to build up in consistency. Um, I am, I do do lists and I, ha I have, I have goals every single day and I close every day out with self-reflection. Um, but it's not so much as written down as a, as a mental process that I go through. Um, but I do recommend journaling. It's just something that my, I've been very sporadic with, to be honest. You know, but some people, it, it, you have to find what really works for you. Um, so I suggest you try that and see if that's how if you can work out some of your thoughts and feelings. Now, what I do like about journaling, when I've pulled out my old journals, and mind you, we've had four interstate moves in our life. So there are boxes that have been going with us forever. Um, but when I pull out some old journals, I'm always amazed at what I wrote maybe 10 years ago. Mm. And some things, I guess within the past few years, I actually see myself checking things off through that consistency that God has put in me. Before that, I would actually feel bad that what I was reading from five or 10 years ago, I was still in that circle. I was still in that cycle trying to work out of it. And now I can see where I'm coming out of things. So That's good. That is so good. Thanks. Thank you, to Lord. I would like to say something. I had my hand raised. <laughs> sorry. But, um, sorry, sister. Thank Lord. you so much because oh, it's no problem, Evangelist. Um, it's like it was I was ordained to come here tonight um because I have bone to bone on my left knee and they deem me as having osteoarthritis and I'm almost 58 and I gained 50 pounds literally during COVID and I used to walk up to two to 15 miles literally per day and I had got, gone to the pool and I had lost like 40 pounds one year I lost 55, but I kept gaining it back. And I'm kind of, I'm five, seven, but it's like, and I, I'm just like you for hours at that time, the rest thing. And it just, you just bless me. And I thank you for being transparent. And yeah, Lord's going to help me because I was a little um, scared to actually get knee surgery because, you know, I don't like to be put to sleep and stuff. And that's kind of 
a, a fear kind of thing. Did she drop off? I think she dropped off, unfortunately. And I will say, before you do anything, pray that you... Oh, hi, Alina. I see you back. She's back. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. But um, definitely pray. I know I prayed long and hard about the knee surgery. If it just got to the point, it was either that or I was going to be in a lot of constant pain because the cortisone injections didn't work anymore. But I will tell you one thing. I prayed about it. I got, I got a good sense of from God. But let me tell you something. I was totally compliant. I did the pre-exercises. I researched. My sister would tell you she came and put me through PT boot camp. She did everything but put a tire on my back and had me drag it down the street because <laughs> um, she's a physical therapist. But I had PT. And my, my thing was I was not going to go through that level of pain and that rehab and not give it 100%. My husband was my coach. I did everything that um, the doctors and the PT, it hurt like everything but I did it and it's worth it because I have total mobility and I'm totally pain-free. And it set the stage for me to do some other things I needed to do in my life. Uh, I just wish it had not taken me that much, that long to get to that, but to God be the glory, he brought me through that, but he taught me a lot through that process as well. So we have to look at even our challenges Look at it as an opportunity to grow and learn and spend less time in the pity party and the guilt trips. That's Those true. negative emotions only work to pull you down. There's yeah. something good in everything. There are lessons for your good in everything and be positive and look at it that way. Even the things you don't understand, say, Lord, open up my understanding. And when I say he will, he'll give you clarity. He'll give you peace. He'll give you everything that you need. And, and even I know what my natural gifts are. My family teases me about my memory and all this kind of stuff. But I truly understand that those are gifts from God that and, and so I give him all glory for those things, but I have to use them to his glory as well. Amen. Man, that is so good. That is so good. We've really been blessed by you tonight, uh, Dr. Evangelist Karen Lewis. And uh, I'm sorry, I left out the doctor parts. Please accept my apologies for that. And uh, no just problem. seeing you and how humble you are and how God just continues to elevate you more and more uh, to be even more successful and even to be inspirational on here. I, I just, it's like you're a life coach tonight. <laughs> a personal life coach tonight in so many different ways and hitting all aspects of our lives, um, spiritually, physically, I mean, just all around the wholeness of the being. And I appreciate you and everything that you have shared tonight. You are a great woman of God and may God continue to bless you and strengthen you. And again, thank the family for being here and thank all those that are here for the first time. We appreciate you all. Tune in again next uh, Monday night for This Is My Story, but it's the Her Perspective. It's going to be a panel discussion. We have three young women that are entrepreneurs and starting their own uh, businesses and things like that, but they're young going into different areas of their lives. And so we'll hear their, their, their stories of their journey as well, and you'll be able to you know, uh, talk with them more about um, uh, their successes and, and things like that as well. So we really appreciate you again. And you have a lot of comments in the chat and they're still commenting. And we know that God is, has even greater things in store for you. We just ask that you close us out with final remarks and prayer. I just want to thank and praise the Lord for each and every one of you. And trust me, even before my husband and I had prayer together, um, I know that I'm just a vessel. And I know that it's God that gives an increase to any knowledge or words that, you know, you share. I do love pouring into people um, because I do think knowledge. And that comes back to our upbringing. We were taught to serve and we were taught to, to, to lift other people. And um, so that's a part of my ministry. Um, but I ask God that whoever was on the call, whatever they needed to hear, it, I, don't, I don't have to know what people needed to hear. God knows. So if you got something tonight, thank God. And I thank God for just using me to say something that would bring light or life to areas that you have in your lives. 
And with that, we're just going to close out with a word of prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you in prayer just to say thank you. We thank you for this fellowship. We thank you for this congregation of men and women that love you, oh God. We come before you asking that we will take the words that we shared tonight, that we will take everything that we've heard and we'll apply that which you have illuminated in our minds that we needed to hear, Lord, that you will help us, oh Lord, to apply it to our lives, to make the necessary changes, to grow, and to be all that you would have us to be. Oh God, help us to move from a place of reacting to a place of being proactive, a place of looking unto you for direction in advance rather than deliverance after the fact. Help us to go on the strength of this prayer and in your name, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. We just ask that you unmute your, uh, your, your audio and come in. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. For what we have heard tonight, may God continue to bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you yes, and Lord. give you peace in Jesus' amen. name. Thank you, Lord. We love you so much. Amen. Thanks again for, for blessing us God again. Bless may God bless you and keep you. Amen. amen. Love you all. Thank you, Lord. Bye. 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 Bye